Welcome to tonight's episode of Life Support. I'm Sigourney, and tonight I'll be taking all you modern women through the most magnificent modern method of birth control. I'm Penny, and I'm here to teach you about all the stuff that actually matters. Dr. Rudy, happy to be here again tonight. And in a short while, I'll be showing you parents how to give your child the greatest gift they already possess. Jeez, you'd need to be a doctor to get your head around that one, Rudy. Not if you keep watching, my friend. Yeah, right. G'day, I'm Todd, and as you can probably tell, I'm a handy man. And tonight, I'll be revealing a potential killer that exists in every family home. But don't worry, I will be letting you in on what to do about it. Oh, Todd, that truly sounds like must-see TV. It certainly does. And it sounds like we've got a pretty packed show. Oh, we sure do. So let's not hang about, let's get stuck in. Tonight on Child Watch, I want to talk to you about school bullies. Bullies have always been a problem. Picking on the weak and different just because they can. Every day, hundreds of kids live in constant fear of being physically, or if they're lucky, verbally abused. So, if you're the victim of school bullying, don't worry, because here's the solution. All you have to do is keep a diary where you plan a school massacre, making sure that you clearly and repeatedly name each bully as a potential target. Then just leave the diary somewhere to be discovered. And once word gets out that there's a planned revenge shooting, the bullies should stop their bullying. Now, this sounds easy enough, but there are a few tricks to making this work for you. Firstly, never use your name in the diary. Always refer to yourself as I. There are two reasons for this. Firstly, the diary can't be traced back to you. And secondly, chances are these bullies are picking on other kids too. So if they don't know who the potential trigger man is, they're going to have to be nice to everyone. Then, just to be sure, make sure you don't use your own handwriting. Type everything out on computer and cut and paste it into this book. Sure, that takes time, but cutting and pasting makes it look like you're totally preoccupied with revenge and everyone will take the whole thing more seriously. You might also want to include some newspaper clippings of other revenge shootings just to show where you got your inspiration from. And make sure that the guns you claim to use in your planned attack are easily available in this country. You don't want to blow the whole thing by claiming to own a gun that you saw on telly only to find out that it doesn't really exist. So do your research. Your best bet is to go for something that's not too fancy, a gun that anyone would own. And there you have it a cheap, easy and crafty way to keep those bullies at bay. And not only have you saved yourself, but every other kid and kid too. And you've given the bullies a taste of what it's like to live in constant fear. See ya. As any handyman will tell you, it's difficult to get rid of chemicals and poisons that you use in your everyday DIY projects. Local council and the EPA have really cracked down on people who dump these toxic nasties. So, take a tip from Todd and mark your dangerous chemicals with an instantly recognisable logo. Then, leave them in the back of an unlocked car and you can be sure some fashion junkie will come by and help themselves. You see, a passing adolescent isn't going to care they haven't seen the advertisement for a bright yellow Nike sports drink that smells like sump oil. They just see a jar with a swoosh on it and swoop. Now, this branding works for anything you might want to get rid of. So, there's no need for you to go to the tip ever again. 
you can get rid of any unwanted computers, fridges or furniture simply by leaving them in the back of an unlocked car with the right logo in the wrong suburb overnight. And when you're finally done, don't pay the parking fee, just leave the car. Yeah, that's right. Just do it. I've got this big thing against Nike at the moment. I reckon um, labels are a uh, big sign of um, low self-confidence and low self-esteem in a person that they need to conform to what society thinks that they should be wearing. Shoes, they're the latest ones from Nike. Yeah. These jeans are from Echo, which is there. Shirts by Guess. Watches Jag. Oh, religious beads. I'm Buddhist and country red bag. Yeah, so it like on average a week I'd probably spend like two hundred dollars on clothing. <laughs> about you but I really enjoyed watching the Winter Olympics on TV it made me so want to be there well it may be too late for Utah but if you want to go to the next Winter Olympics now is the time to start thinking about it because if you're going to go to the Olympics why not go as an Olympic athlete of course generally speaking it's incredibly hard work to become an elite international athlete but if you're like me and you haven't played competitive sports since you were forced to do hockey in year 10, don't worry, there is a loophole. Can you do this? Then you've got all the skill it takes to become a member of the Australian curling team. Curling is a wonderful sport, kind of like lawn bowls on ice. The person who slides the rock down requires some skills. But a curling team also needs two people to do this sweepy thing. And anyone who's ever cleaned a kitchen floor already has all the skills they need. So get your act together and start curling now. Who knows, if you get really good at sweeping, you might even get a medal. Oh, Dr. Rudy, I have to say, I get so overwhelmed by the amount of mail we receive. Ah, uh, no, we must be quite the envy of Santa Claus. <laughs> but unlike Santa Claus, we're very real and here to help. That's right. And did you know, Sigourney, that I get a lot of letters from parents asking for the easiest way to explain the facts of life to their son or daughter? Mm, a very embarrassing and awkward situation for any parent, I'm sure. That's right. If you're not trained to be completely objective about sex, like me. It is the most dauntingly difficult thing to do. Our grandparents use allegories like the birds and the bees, and my father gave me an illustrated book called Where Did I Come From? But these days, kids aren't into allegories and books, they're into television. And that makes giving them the big talk an absolute doddle. All you have to do is reach into the back of your wardrobe and pull out one of your old porn videos. Something like Debbie Does Dallas, a real classic. Then line it up at a nice heterosexual one-on-one -on -one scene. Just make sure you turn the volume down so they don't hear any nasty swearing. Yes. Then call the youngster into the room, press play and show them exactly how babies are made. So simple and a moment to cherish for parent and child alike. Of course, you'll have to explain that it doesn't normally go all over the back like that. That's just for demonstration purposes. So there you go, a refreshingly frank way to explain the facts of life. And all it took was an old porno. Speaking of which, it's always best to use a video from the pre-silicon implanted 70s. That way, you won't distort your child's idea of body image. Well, I went and looked it up at North Sydney Library. I think I was about in year three and um, the kids in year five were talking about periods. So um, I went up to the front counter and said, can you show me the books on periods? And they went, what period, like the Renaissance, the blah, and I'm going, no, 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 periods, you know. And they kind of led me off to this section I spent all day looking at books just going, oh, that's so gross. One day when I was 12, 13, that happened. My dad asked me about, it was, it's just funny hearing your parents say um, penis, vagina, all the different things, and especially my dad has a strong Indian accent. So um, it's pretty funny. I just used this video in the white box. I thought, oh, yeah, what's this? I'm gonna have a look. So I put in the video recorder. It was uh, pretty explicit stuff, X-rated, I say. And it was pretty shocking for a seven-year-old back then. Yeah, my dad's a Catholic, I'm one of seven. And I found his book, The Joy of Sex, in the um, 
in the cupboard when I was about 10. It was very interesting reading. No, I'm a wog. It's not going to happen. Never ever would that happen, that sex education talk. You would not find that. Very, very rarely in a wog family. Oh, Dr Rudy, you're always looking out for the youth of the nation. I'll do what I can. And right now, let's take a look at this. Drugs can ruin your life. I'm sure they feel good. And all that stuff about them being bad for your health is just government propaganda. But the downside of getting high is that drugs are really expensive. So, for the sake of your bank balance, I'm going to show you a great way to get free drugs whenever you want them. Simply join the police force. Once you've filled in a couple of forms, taken a couple of tests and completed a few months of basic training, the government will give you a handgun and put you out on the streets. Now, if you can't get a good deal from a dealer once you're on patrol, you should have no troubles getting fixed up back in the police station locker room. Oh, she looks like she's on something good. See ya. Hey, mate, where'd you get your stuff? Ah, g'day. We all know that too much television is bad for children. And at 60 kilos, this is far too much television. You see, unfortunately there's been an increasing number of incidents where young kiddies have jostled with the television only to have it fall down on top of them, killing them and the TV. So tonight, I'm going to show you how to avoid this tragic double fatality in your home. Now, you could always just buy a lighter, smaller television like this one, but there's no need to go to extremes. I mean, you've already given up enough to be a parent. Of course, you could shell out for one of these new plasma screen TVs. It's top of the line, and it's light enough to hang on the wall away from wandering hands. But at 15,000 bucks, well, the kids are already costing you around 30,000 a year, and you don't know where that money's gonna come from. So the best thing to do is ensure your existing set is secure and safe. And that is so simple. Just build a fence around your television so that the kiddies can't get to it. You can pick up your materials from your local pool shop and bolt it to the walls and the floor. Just remember to put in a gate so that you can get in to put on a video or DVD. So take a tip from Todd and install a preventative playpen around your TV today and protect the two most precious things in your life. Hello Australia and welcome. I'm so bored. These days children are far too reliant on expensive toys and computer games to keep themselves entertained. As a result, you parents end up spending more money every birthday and Christmas on presents that you hope will keep kids like Hosni here amused. So next birthday, why don't you try giving them the gift that keeps on giving? Give them their imagination. Sure enough, all children should use their imagination, only most haven't found it. And here's how you can give it to them. Simply take a large empty box and gift wrap it for the special day. Children love unwrapping presents, and the bigger, the better. And then imagination will get going just by trying to guess what's inside. Happy birthday, Hosni. Wow, is it a train set? Yes, yes it is. It's a PlayStation as well. Wow, a train set and a PlayStation. It's anything you want it to be. It's your imagination. Let it run wild and you can have or do anything you like. But there's nothing in here. There's something marvellous in there. You just don't know how to use it yet. Keep trying. And there you have it. Hours of fun and it's practically free and it doesn't need batteries. He may not thank me for it now, but when he's 35, overweight and balding, he'll still be able to look in the mirror and see only a matinee idol looking back. And that's a great gift. Bye now. Ladies, if you're a modern woman like me, you wouldn't settle for anything less than the perfect man. But when it comes to his looks, there's always something about him that isn't quite right. 
Maybe his lips are too thin, his eyes too close together, or his chin too weak, even if his credit rating is strong. But who amongst us has the time to endlessly search for this Mr. Perfect? Well, there's no need to worry, because there is a way you can have someone else do the searching for you. All you have to do is head to your local police station and file a report about how you were attacked by an intruder. Then give a lengthy and very detailed description of your attacker to a sketch artist. Yes, his eyes were expressive, exactly the right space apart, and a deep blue colour, like Mediterranean rock pools. And he had a very sculptured jaw and cheekbones, not as sculptured as Guy Pearce though. And he has just the fullest, softest lips. Lips you can imagine kissing for hours and hours. Any facial hair? No, thank you. Once your vision is complete... Oh, yes. That's him. That's definitely him. Now it's time to set the boys in blue out to round up the anything but usual suspects. Can I get a closer look at number three, please? Number three, step forward. Turn your left. And you're right. Then, as soon as you've found him, tell the police they haven't. I'm afraid it's none of them. All right, you're all free to go. Excuse me. I have to go to the bathroom. Hi. Remember, one-way glass means you can see them, but they couldn't see you. Would you like to go for a drink? Oh, boys, I'd love to join you for a drink. You go ahead and I'll catch up. All right. See ya. And there you have it. I've got my pick of four magnificent men, and it took all of about four minutes. And if you don't have any success with them, remember, your assailant is still out there. You know, Penny, since your story last week about chroming, we had a big response from our viewers. Choice. I love to interface. It's all about connecting with the folks out there. And with a few folks in here. Apparently, Dr Rudy was very impressed by your advice last week. Really? Oh, yes. In fact, I think it inspired his next segment. Yeah? Huh. Just proves there's something for everyone in my POV. I guess. How's it? Dr Rudy here. You know, many of you young male viewers have consulted me, all with the same problem. You feel there is a distinct possibility that you are gay. But you will not be completely convinced of this until you experience the physical nature of homosexuality. The problem is, if you have homosexual sex and found out you are straight, you will have outed yourself for no good reason at all. But don't worry, bar curious boys. All you need to do is test the waters in a covert way. And this is easy to do, especially if you and your friends are into chroming. All you have to do is get hold of a can of water-based paint. Then the next time you and your friends indulge in some inhalant use, you use this. That way, when everyone else is bossed out, you will still be conscious and can have your way with the aerosol addict of your choice. Then if you discover that homosexuality isn't for you, well, no one will ever know that you once had a crack at it. If, however, you find that gay sex is for you, just inhale a can of the real stuff and join your comatose canoodler in a post-coital catnap. So, there you go, boys. Give that a go. A clandestine way to find out if you're gay. Bana. They can't tell, but, like, um, other people will probably tell them, like, you know, your hand movements are suggesting that you're gay, or the way you talk, it's like a stereotypical thing. I suppose some of them you can't tell, and the only really way to test them is, like, just start pushing up on them and see, see how they react. I love me footy, but I don't love the aches and pains that set in after a match. If you've got a strain injury, or a serious bruise, the best thing to do is apply some of these. Problem being, after a particularly rough match, you soon run out of packets. That's why you've got to take a tip from Todd, because there is an easier way. Most of us have one of these lying around the house somewhere. What you've got to do is empty out the polystyrene beads. And just replace it with frozen peas. 
So the next time you've given your all for your captain, you can sit back and relax. Total relief. There's nothing I dig more than a totally huge night out. And at the end of one of those nights, I'm always fully starving. The only bummer is, I've got enough money to either get home or get something to eat. And I always choose to eat. And I always choose to eat pizza. Because if you ask for home delivery, they'll always take you too. See ya. As modern women, birth control is a constant issue in our lives. There are so many alternatives. Condoms, the pill, the diaphragm, the spermicides. And you know what? None of these methods are 100% effective. There are two ways to avoid becoming a mother. Abstinence or hysterectomy. Now, for ideological reasons, I could never choose abstinence. So today, I'm going to take you through the benefits of being completely sterilised. For a start, the female reproductive organs weigh the best part of a kilo, so having them cut out is a great way to lose weight. Then, once they're gone, no more surfing the crimson tide. You can surf every day of the month. Plus, you'll save a fortune on condoms and pill prescriptions, and you'll never have to visit the abortion clinic again. I know what you're thinking. Surely getting a hysterectomy is sacrificing the most powerful weapon in any woman's armoury. Her ability to trap a man into a shotgun wedding. Not at all. Just because you can't get pregnant doesn't mean you can't say you're pregnant. Oh, poor Sigourney. Bet you're glad to be rid of those pesky tonsils. I am. Of course, one day I'll want to give my husband children. And I'll do just that, through adoption. It's so much better for the figure, and it's all the rage in Hollywood. Now that I'm barren, I can relax and have fun. Safe in the knowledge that the only person I'll have to mother is the man in my life. My word, Sigourney, what a practical idea. I may just start recommending that to my patients. I'm sure the more women know it's available, the more women will choose to have it done. Yeah, right. Well, check this out, guys. You're not going to believe it, but here we are at the end of another show. And I hope we've provided some relief to those of you who've required it. And if not, try and keep it together for another seven days. We'll be back. That's right. With more great advice you won't find on any other lifestyle show. Until then, you Australians be good to one another. And in the meantime, why not get involved in a charity? And remember, gang, the only reason we're in here is because you're out there. See you next week. Good night, Australia. Australia.